How's it going everyone? I'm Chucky2009 here with Mr. Steven Leone, Georgia Trade School instructor, and we are going to be doing a test that looks rather miserable, but probably profitable for those who can make it work. <laughs> yeah, so we've got some Schedule 160 um, pipe here today. It's pretty small, obviously, as you can see. Um, so this is how it comes. Factory is kind of nice clean spray paintish look to it mill scale all over it um, so basically what we've done on the opposite side of that is prep it down remove some of that garbage i've tried to put a 1 8 landing on there closer to about 5 30 seconds you want a nice thick landing we're going to run a stick root on this guy so as you can see i've cleaned up anywhere the weld is going to be tied in you want to remove any type of debris paint marker dirt, rust, oil, anything that's going to get between you and your weld being tied into this base metal. So what we've done is we've cleaned it up, cleaned the inside up a little bit, put it on a bench grinder, taken all the stuff off it so it's nice and clean. Now I want to talk about these Sharpie marks real quick. The reason why I have these marked is what's going to happen is you're going to get highs and lows. Oh. Don't mind me just knocking stuff over. <laughs> you're going to get highs and lows on this landing. This landing is a flat surface so that way when you stick your electrode to weld them together what happens is you don't want that pushing all the way through. So you put a landing on there which is a flat surface that allows the weld to be rested on and provides optimal penetration without it blowing through. Um, so make sure that you take any burrs off, take anything that's going to come between your weld and it tying into the base metal, um, you know, as best as you can. Definitely. Now, for those who maybe stumbled upon this video and, you know, haven't yet learned this about pipe welding, difficulty, and see if you're more welcome to agree with this, difficulty, from what little I know about this, is more or less synonymous with diameter because if you had like a 40 inch piece of pipe, that angle's not changing very right. quickly coming around, so it's really easy to keep tabs on what's going on. This is like, <laughs> and it is over. <laughs> yeah. So basically what Chuck is saying is, you know, it's by the time you put four tacks in this, feather it down, I mean, you're talking, you're going to have under an inch to weld per section and you're moving fast. Mm -hmm. Whereas like a 48 inch or a 24 inch pipe is so large that it's basically like welding straight in a straight line. This, however, is not. So we're going to 6010 root this and 7018 cap this in the two G position so you can get the best view um, as far as watching the root, watching the fill passes, and watching the cap. Um, and what I was going to say earlier about the marker points is you have highs and lows. So basically what you want to do, it's not going to be perfect every time, but you want to make sure that you find the best sandwich fit up. And so what you can do is you're going to roll that top pipe. So you see as we roll it, we've got some gaps where they're not going to fit up perfectly. And what I've found is that in this orientation right here is about the best fit up we're going to get. Cool. So mark it with a marker so that way when you go to prep it or throw it around or knock it over, anything, you know where to go back to. So we're going to go ahead and put some, some tacks in these and I'm going to show you how to tack it up and feather it in just a minute. We have taken ourselves a piece of angle iron, just small angle, um, so that way when we tack this, this fixture isn't allowing the pipe to roll. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take just a 332nd rod, if you have a TIG rod to be preferred, but an old uh, welding rod is fine, and I'm just gonna beat the flux off of it. This is gonna produce some intelligent comments. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just take the flux off of that, you know, in any fashion, any way that you can. Just get yourself a 332nd inch piece of wire, however you have to do it. Yeah. And so what you want to do is you're going to bend this rod like so. Yeah. To be even. Mm -hmm. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put it down in the pipe itself and turn it to the side. Now the key here is after you do that, you don't want to move the pipe. Right? You want to keep it tight so that way your gap is maintained. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a tack at 12 o'clock. Then we're going to roll the pipe and put a tack at 6. Then we'll take our spacer out and do 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock and then feather those up and run the route. So right now we'll just focus on putting our tack in at 12 o'clock. Do 
check for penetration. All right, so we just put our tack in at 12, so we're just checking for penetration. You know, now's the time to go ahead and get your machine set and running correctly. If it blew through, obviously turn it down. If you felt like it didn't get through enough, obviously turn it up. But I think we're probably all right with 75 amps. It looks like it got through just enough. We put our tack in at 12, which opened up our six o'clock side. So all you have to do, right, you wanna make sure that you've got a nice tight gap. So just take a hammer and just hit on that side. Hopefully that closed the gap up a little bit, which it did. All right. And then go ahead and put your tack in at six o'clock. As long as we're not over an eighth and we're above flush, we're pretty good. And now we'll go ahead and take our spacing rod out. Man, you have a trick for everything. Try to, <laughs> see if it works. All right, now we'll put in our three o'clock and nine o'clock tacks. show you what we're working with here. So do you see how this side has a keyhole, right? That is a term for where your weld can tie back into, just like a key fits in a lock. When you come back around, it's gonna tie back in. But do you see how this side does not? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cut disc and we're gonna do a technique called feathering. So we're gonna take the edge of the disc and we're going to feather back and forth to emulate a actual keyhole. So we're gonna do that throughout all these tacks, right? See, this one has a keyhole that the rod will fit into, but this does not have a keyhole. So wherever we don't have a keyhole, we're gonna take a cut disc and we're gonna feather it so that way our weld can tie in all the way through. So I'll roll this so we can get good shots of it. We've got our keyhole side and our keyhole side, right? Both are keyhole now. Keyhole and keyhole, two keyholes, keyhole. Now, the purpose of that is so that when we, you have actually have two options to be completely honest. You have a lot of welders that their style is they want to blow through the tack and completely consume it. Then you have welders where they just want to tie in on either side. Both work. Um, I will say that if you plan on consuming the tack, you need to grind it down um, considerably and you run the risk of popping tacks when you do that. What I mean by that is if you decide to weld one side but you have decided you're gonna consume your tacks instead of tie into them. If you feather them all down so that way you can tie in and you weld one side, the back side more than likely will pop open, which if you're taking the test or practicing and you've spent this much time thus far prepping all this out, um, it's just a pain. You're wasting time. So I always suggest tie in. You can see our Sharpie mark. We're still in the original spot where that needs to be. Um, I'm gonna drag to the left so that way you guys can see, um, but just a, a hint when you're putting the root in what you want to do assuming your machine is set correctly i'll show you the bare electrode side you want to heat up your keyhole when you come to it so don't just strike off at the keyhole and stick in you want to go behind you want to heat up into the keyhole so you blow through any type of reinforcement you have there so that it ties in um, these small diameter coupons can be deceiving so you want to make sure that you're traveling at the appropriate speed um, if your rod's sticking, obviously turn it up. If your rod's blowing through, um, speed it up. So yeah, it's, you can see it's a very small run. So you're not gonna be struggling too much as far as consuming too much rod. Uh, your struggle is gonna be rod angle and speed. So heat up your keyhole, tie in, push through, listen for that roar, push all the arc and all the light to the backside. And then we are actually gonna tie into another keyhole as well. So see yeah. if we can get a shot of this. So you're saying one of the main things is you gotta be ready to go from like here to yeah, that you're, inch or whatever. Yeah, you're gonna move pretty fast, so I always suggest people shut your machine off, do a dry run. So, I'll just hold the electrode. Um, so you're gonna wanna do a dry run. So position yourself to where, as that rod is get consumed, or it's getting consumed, you can make sure that you can make it all the way there. So don't fumble up on your wrist, little stuff, because you have about an inch and a half to screw up, so. That's wonderful advice.
ini. Cool. That was fast. All right, so we just ran our first pass on the route. Uh, you know, you don't want to be over an eighth. You want to make sure that you're tied in. So again, this is the time to check your machine settings, make sure that your rod angle is correct. But if you're pushing an eighth of an inch or under above flush um, and everything's working well, then you're good to go and go ahead and run the other side. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run the side opposite that we just ran. You're not gonna weld this thing in a circle. You wanna quarter it like you take lugs off a tire. Um, and that's just for heat distribution. You know, you don't wanna make sure that you stay, the pipe stays perpendicular, right, to each other. So in order to do that, we're gonna weld this section. And we're gonna hop over here and we're gonna weld this section the opposite direction. So. As the the length of the pipe goes it's kind of hard to see the root itself like if you miss tie-ins or anything like that um, at this point if you're taking a test on this um, it's done so you can't really like hey let me grind that spot out it's over um, so yeah just make sure you're within an eighth you're tying in a couple things to note like if you have really bad tie-ins maybe you need to feather more maybe you need to feather less um, so yeah that's that just don't be over an eighth of an inch and no droopy, no dog, um, can't say on the internet, no hangers. <laughs> um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this slag up. Um, we're gonna take a grinder and clean down any highs um, and, and wire wheel out any slag. All right, so now we've got our root kind of ground out. All right, I'll probably clean it up a little bit more with a wire wheel couple things to note no arc marks outside the bevel right so we don't have any stray arc marks um, that's gonna be crucial when you come in to fill with your 7018 so like anywhere here where you see still see 6010 slag you know you want to make sure that you get that out so that you don't trap any contaminants all right so we're gonna put a hot pass in now so basically the object of this pass we want to fuse the root cover the root up so the root has joined our two pipes together so now what we want to do is burn out any other contaminants and tie in to the root and the other pieces of pipe. All right, so we put the hot pass in. Now we're gonna start layering in uh, intermediate passes. So if you've ever done a horizontal bevel before, which hopefully if you're watching this video at this point, you probably have. Uh, we're gonna tie into the bottom toe here. All right, and then we're gonna tie into the top toe. So spread your welds out. It's an eighth inch rod. I know some instructors will force you to do one or the other, learn how to use both. Um, you know, you can cap this with 330 seconds or an eighth. I'm gonna cap it with an eighth because you know, that's just what we're going to do. So we're going to tie into the bottom toe here, then tie into the top toe here, and then build it up and cap it.
Um, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna cover this edge up, cover the middle up, cover the edge up. Pretty simple stuff. You know, this is a small diameter pipe, but for those of you that have welded a, a horizontal bevel before, like I've said uh, previously, just look at it like that. Um, you know, cover the edge up, cover the middle up, cover the edge up. So we're gonna go ahead and get a shot of that. All right, so we officially put our three stringer cap on with uh, 1 8 70 18 See the welds are tied in nice and even. We don't have any uh, undercut or trap slag or anything like that. So that's basically it. Put your root in on the 6010 with a fat 1 8 landing closer to 532. Fill it up with 70 18 and run yourself a three stringer cap and you should be ready to go. Looks smooth, looks even. What's not to love? All right, thank you, Instructor Steven, for, hey, that rhymes. Uh, thank you for showing us this and uh, providing us with your time here. And links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this is everything you need to know to get started. And have a nice day, everybody. Stay safe and happy welding.